Hi everyone. Today we are going to implement a trail renderer in Godot. This is part of my Godot Fight games creation series, in which we will create the game that is shown in the background. There are timestamps in the description and a link to a GitHub repository with a final trail renderer code, so you can just use the code as is. Let's get started. So the way the trail render is going to work when our plane is going to move forward, it is going to periodically leave a point in 3D space behind it. And then for each of those points, we're going to move slightly to the left and slightly to the right from the direction of movement. And we're going to use these points with the Godot surface tool to create a mesh. This mesh, after we are going to render it, is going to simply look like a long rectangle and this rectangle is going to be our trail and we're going to set it up in a way that would allow us to control the width as we get away from the plane and also uh, apply any material we want to get the trail to look more interesting. So again in our project I've created a new scene, I've added a simple node called main, a spatial node called world, and I've added our RTS camera controller. I created a new node called trail render and saved it as a different scene. You can see it here and we'll go over it in just a minute. And I changed the name of the trail render instance here to plane. And the reason is if you watched uh, the other tutorial about the a plane camera controller, you'll probably remember that at the beginning we're trying to cache the model and the model is called plane, so I changed the name of our trail render instance to plane. Now uh, I changed this scene to be the main scene that runs every time we press F5 and we can work on our trail render and use this scene to debug. So trail render is not that straightforward as the other code that uh, I showed you to create the plane controller, but I think that if you have uh, some knowledge of how to use the surface tool and how meshes in general work, you will probably uh, find it pretty easy to follow. Uh, I'll try to do my best explaining uh, what are we doing here. So, so the way the surface tool work and actually every mesh in a game works is it is made out of triangles and when we use the surface tool we insert vertices and after each three vertices that we uh, enter to the surface tool we create a triangle so for example I have here four points if I'll insert them in the order one, two, three, I'm going to get a triangle in my mesh. However, if I'll enter them in a different order, say one, three, and two, this triangle will only be visible if I am looking at this mesh from the other side. So the rule here is if we are entering triangles in clockwise order they are going to be visible from this angle and if we are inserting inserting them counterclockwise we are going to only see them from the other side so if we want to create a quad from four vertices we need to first enter the order one two three clockwise and then three two four also clockwise and of course we can switch the order however we want we can uh, for this triangle choose three one two or two three one the order itself doesn't matter as long as they are in a clockwise order and creating this triangle we have some export parameters that will allow us to control the trail render from the editor and I've written this uh, trail render to be as general as possible um, 
the use case I'm imagining is um, you need a trail, you simply drag this script to uh, a spatial node with uh, uh, this setup and you have a trail behind you and I think uh, it would add a lot of flair to your games. So the first parameter is width. Width is exactly uh, the parameter I showed you um, in the example in the graphic before. It is going to um, say what is the baseline of our width. The width curve is going to control uh, how the uh, width of the trail behaves um, the more we get away from the source. The length of the trail is going to be set by the maximum amounts of point here and uh, increasing the number of points also uh, increase the uh, how fluid your trail look. Um, I added here a material. Uh, we are going to set up the trail in a way that would allow us to utilize uh, any material that we want. And I added this flag whether or not to render because sometimes we would like to uh, disable the uh, trail. We have two parameters, half width, uh, and the reason is we don't want to continuously calculate this uh, value. So whenever we start the game, we first of all calculate uh, what half width is because from the point we are going to go uh, half width to the left and half width to the right. Uh, that was a hard thing to say. And um, uh, here we have uh, the points array and we are going to save all the points from the trail here and uh, whenever we exceed max points we are just going to uh, drop the uh, oldest point that we have. So in the process function it's also uh, pretty straightforward. If we are tr uh, rendering we are adding a new point and we are uh, drawing the trail. Uh, the reason we need to redraw the trail every time is if we want to uh, be able to control the width with this curve, uh, we need to uh, always uh, change the, uh, the entire uh, points that we are using to create the mesh. And then we call draw trail, which takes all the points in this array and just creates the mesh from them. Uh, if we are not rendering, um, if we stop rendering uh, after the we already have a mesh we want to slowly phase the trail out so while we have points and if we don't want to render we simply uh, remove the last point and uh, free it so this is how the process function works add point is another pretty straightforward function we are going to uh, create a new position 3d and we are going to set the translation and rotation to uh, the trail renderer, uh, global transform and global uh, rotation and the way in Godot to get the global rotation is uh, by calling the global transform basis and asking uh, to get the Euler uh, coordinates and this is returning a vector 3 which represents uh, the rotation. Uh, we take this point, we insert it to our points array uh, at the beginning and if we have too many points, we pop the oldest point and free it. And this way we will always have uh, no more than max uh, number of points. And the points are going to uh, update to the last position our trail render was at. So this is another one of the functions finished. And we're here at the... the final uh, straightforward function um, we are only drawing the trail if we have two or more points because you can't create a mesh with only two points with, with only two uh, uh, vectors in a 3d space so if we have uh, two uh, or more points we create a new surface tool uh, after you create a surface tool you need to uh, initialize it with uh, this command uh, it's surface tool dot begin and uh, the mesh type is going to be primitive triangles and because we are uh, creating the triangles like I explained before. We then go uh, over each of our points and we send to uh, the points to rect function the surface tool along with two points, two consecutive points and we also save the index 
because uh, we are using it to uh, both create the UV uh, mapping and also to scale the size with the curve. After we finish uh, adding all the points, we uh, generate normals. We commit. Commit means take all the triangles we created and uh, turn them into a mesh. And we are uh, setting this uh, new mesh as the render node mesh. And render node is of type mesh instance, as you can see. So we, we are simply uh, setting this mesh parameter of this node. Uh, the reason, by the way, it is inside another node is if you put a spatial uh, node inside a regular node, then the transform uh, he uses is always uh, the global transform. So it saves us from uh, rewriting uh, long lines of code and always trying to test. When you do it like this, uh, you are less prone to make any errors with translation and, uh, and global tr uh, translation. Uh, the, the last thing we are doing is taking uh, this mesh instance and setting the surface to the material the user uh, sent us with the export program material. And uh, after we this function finishes, the trail is going to be uh, on the screen. So this is the big uh, part of the code, the part that does uh, the most of the heavy lifting. It is um, like um, most of graphical code, very technical. So first of all, uh, we uh, calculate the number of points, minus one. Uh, we create the offset for the first two points uh, by taking the index and um, dividing it by num points. This will give us a value between zero and one, which is exactly what we want for both the width and um, for using the curve, because um, I, I can show you this now. Uh, if you go, if you go to the trail render, and I'm going to go to an instance of it, we have this width curve, and if we create a new curve here, you can see that the values are between zero and one. So um, no matter what uh, shape I make here. If I want to get the value of the of the of the curve, uh, I need to send a value between zero and one. So um, this normalization gives us exactly a value in that range. We then um, calculate uh, the width modifier, which is going to be the half width type times uh, what the width curve in the offset of these two points is. So uh, after we have these two values, we can calculate the first point by taking the, uh, uh, the, position, the first position 3D translation and adding it to, uh, to it uh, the basis in the x-axis, which is the right and left axis. And we are multiplying it by this mod, which is how much to the side we want to move. And we're doing exactly the same here but this time we are sub subtracting uh, this value and we are setting the UVs to be uh, 0 for the first point and 1 to the second and uh, the offset is the one we calculated here. Uh, this code is exactly the same one, we are just using uh, point 2 and offset 2 and mod 2 and then all the lines here are simply adding the triangles. So as you, as I showed you in the example, we are adding uh, point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3, and we're creating one triangle, and then point 0.3, point 0.4, point 0.2, creating the second triangle. And the reason here we have an, uh, four of them is we want the trail to be able, to, we want to be able to view the trail from both sides. So I simply add another triangle in the exact opposite order. Instead of 1, 2, 3, I do 3, 2, 1. And now this triangle is the same triangle visible from both directions. And uh, I am by no means an expert in uh, creating meshes with the code. So um, if any of you have a better way of doing it, I would love to hear about it. And I would uh, be 
uh, extremely happy if you could write it in the comments for me to learn and um, after we finish creating all these triangles we have uh, a quad visible from two angles exactly between the two points that we sent and um, by now you're probably already pretty eager to see the results so let's uh, jump to uh, our test environment we're going to take this plane we're going to start with a, a very basic curve um, I set the width to be something very high so we can see it and let's set some uh, low number of points because I want we want to see the the end of them uh, so the curve would have an, an effect and if we run you see that we have this nice trail you can see that it's flapping around uh, with uh, the rotation of our object I can make it longer I can make it in, uh, decrease in size uh, the more we get away from the source I can even add another point and then it will have like uh, this uh, the, the shape of uh, a flame and to finish this look of uh, a flame I can add a spatial material and set the albedo to I don't know this orange and we have this very basic uh, flame but uh, I'm sure um, some more uh, creative people than me could create uh, much better effects and that's it this is uh, the trail renderer if we don't move too fast it looks really nice and uh, it's written in a way with, that is very reusable so you can jump to the description uh, go to my github page and simply take the code and uh, use it on your projects and that is all for now in the next parts, we are going to implement the jet effect, the exploding targets, and everything else you see in the footage. So subscribe if you want to see the next parts as they come out. As always, if you have any suggestions or questions, write them down in the comments and I will answer them. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Goodbye.